I'm Sue Lipscomb and I'm the Managing Director of Codstakes. Codstakes has been in Bristol for 35 years and I named it after what I was having for lunch. I moved to Bristol uh, to become a student in art and uh, decided to stay. I love the city. We are mostly known for our work in animation, stop frame animation, We're having worked on all of the Wilson Gromit films and we've done a lot of work in commercials and we're attached to five Oscar winning Oscar -winning films. We've built some fantastic things and this is what we're looking at today, which is the work to big sculptures of the whales. My vision for this piece of sculpture was to design two whales, one emerging from the ocean and one diving in, and make the sculpture bigger than the actual world would actually be, but to really create something that had life. <laughs> There's nothing like making a whale a bigger whale than the biggest whale in the world. <laughs> but they're not particularly meant to be any particular whale. They're the whale in your imagination. We have a, a, a 3D scan of a model that we made in polystyrene of the whale tail. Uh, I've taken that and I've sectioned it and from these sections um, I'm building an armature that we can build our, our life-size whale around. We're, we're trying to keep it as organic um, and green as possible. That's why we've chosen the materials that we're using. We're also um, going to a length to try and create a bit of drama. Mainly the problems we're having are just the logistical problems because of the physical side of it. So we're, we're using kind of forklift and certain platforms to build this thing in our car park. I think the next stage, once we have all of the, um, the steel, tubular steel sections up, we need to start defining the outline and putting a surface on it in steel. Once we've got that surface, the, the guys can start covering that in the willow, which is going to be the finish. The whales are made from steel, has a steelwork internal structure, which is going to support the skin, which is made out of willow. The willow is supplied by Musgrave Willows in Somerset, which is a local supplier. Stopping my wonderful chin profile. <laughs> I'm Ellen Musgrove, and along with my husband Mike and son Jack, we run Musgrove Willows. Uh, we are producing the willow for the Bristol Wales. Bristol is the European Green Capital 2015 and we're absolutely thrilled and delighted to be involved in such a wonderful project. Uh, we grow 60 different varieties of willow here on the farm. Um, the bulk of our crop is actually a Silex triandra black maul, which is the most common willow grown on the Somerset levels for basketry and sculpture work. When we plant a willow bed, we always plant by hand. So every single willow bed that we have planted within the last 30, 40 years has actually been planted by a team of people. Uh, it minimises the impact on the ground um, and it means that the strike or take-up rate of the willow as it goes on to grow um, is, is much higher than planting by machinery. Once the willow bed is planted, um, it, it takes about three years to become um, a good productive crop and we only plant once every 30 to 60 years. A willow bed will have a lifespan of around 30 to 60 years, if not longer. Willow for the whale sculpture is our Salix Trandra Black Mall. Um, here we have some that is still growing in the field. We'll cut it now shortly in the, in the next couple of weeks and it will be dried off so that the skin is hard and it's called brown willow. After that process we are going to grade it into different lengths that are suitable to use for such a large sculpture as the whale. Um, so we will use longer lengths like six, seven and eight foot lengths of willow rods. Um, we will grade them 
um, bundle them up into small, more handleable um, bundles and put them in the boiler for a short period of time so that we can make the skin very black, uh, but not boil it long enough that the skin becomes very soft and peels off. We call that steamed willow. Jack is the youngest willow grower in Somerset at 23 years old. He's also the fourth generation of our family to be growing and processing willow here on the Somerset levels. Um, that knowledge that has been acquired over the years has been passed down through to him and we make sure that the quality and standard of our willow is as high as it possibly can be while still working um, environmentally with, with our crop and with our surroundings. Actually, when I was um, when I started weaving these this time, I started getting some blisters. My name is Oliver. I work full time at Cod Stakes as a prop maker, and I love public art. And I'm, at the moment, I'm doing this willow project, which is for me is probably the most exciting project we've ever done. I love it. So I went to Boots and asked them if they had any hand cream to make your hands much tougher. And they thought it was hilarious because I think most people try and get their hands much softer. Over the last six months I've been looking forward to this project. I mean, I've done some sort of big-ish Willow commissions at Glastonbury Pop Festival and I knew we could do it in Willow. Um, and a lot of my fellow model makers who haven't worked in Willow were quite sceptical. So I've had a lot of questions these last few months about, are we really doing this Willow? Are we going to do this? And I've had to sort of stay really positive. And it's been lovely as the project's gone on for sort of four weeks. People are really backing me and now behind it and it's really exciting. Different people have got different styles. When you're weaving it's a bit like a signature. You've got one person doing a certain type of weave and they really get into it and they're just sort of getting a feel for it and they look and someone else is doing some weaving. You've got to make the whole thing look the same. So you have to constantly get people moving in different parts of the whale so the whole thing looks like a one shape rather than you know, there's such and such piece up there and such and such piece there. And being model makers in this company, people were really proud about what they're doing. And so every few minutes or every couple of hours, I've been moving people from different areas, which is, which is good for the overall look, but it can be, you know, it's tricky. Um, I'm pretty fed up with these very blocky, sprayed, perfect objects. And it's nice to have something with some real character and, and local materials, you know? I've got a whale to weave. The whales are diving into a sea of plastic bottles and the bo plastic bottles are sculpted into a very, very lively, deep ocean. And the bottles were collected from the Bristol 10K race and the, the Bath Half Marathon. very important to me to make this sculpture out of sustainable materials. That's why we've gone for recycled plastics, that's why we've gone for locally grown willow. As the runners ran, they threw their bottles towards the bin, some missed and spilled across the floor, but uh, we, we had endless buckets and deliveries of, of plastic bottles here, all of which had to be sorted out and washed and drilled to, to make them fit the sculpture. It's a huge exercise, I think this is 70,000 of them. The nice thing about the fact that we collected these bottles from these runners means that in some way, 70,000 people have contributed towards this piece of sculpture.
automated and cleans. My name is Doug Allen and I'm a wildlife filmmaker. I've been doing that for the past 30 years or so. Before that I was a scientist in the Antarctic. I specialise in marine subjects, diving with whales. And I've been lucky enough to work on a whole string of BBC productions. I've been helping out with the, with the wicker weaving workshops. I kick off by telling the kids something about whales. And the reaction is, it's just fantastic. They, they love hearing about how big they are. They really get it. They ask you all sorts of perceptive questions that an adult might not think about. And I really just love the enthusiasm of the pupils that we've had this um, all through this week. They've just been so on the ball and so willing to take on board the whole idea of it. And I, wouldn't it be great if politicians 40 years down the line still had that same enthusiasm that school children show when they come here? Wouldn't the world be a different place? I'm here from Bristol, just local primary school kids. Ten is a good age, just the right age. Too young and they're not fast enough, too old they get bored. We just hit the right age, ten. It's had a hole drilled in the bottom of them. Diving with whales is the biggest thrill that anyone can have. When you go into that water and there's 50, 60, 70 feet of animal comes up towards you out of the blue, willing to make friends with you. I mean, what could be better than that? It's, it's amazing. You, you hang there, you can, you can fly around about these whales because of course you're in the water. This whale sculpture is, it's magnificent. I've, I've having dived with whales, I can tell you that this sculpture here absolutely captures the, the power and the grace of a whale as it slips under the water. I'd like people who, the visitors who come and see this piece of work, to actually understand some of the problems that we're going to be facing in the future. And that's what we want to do. We want to give people the impact of the whales and then follow up with the story of the plastics. But the biggest challenge is actually going to be getting it to the Millennium Square. I don't know how we're going to do that just yet. <laughs> behind you, drive this back up a bit, there's a wide load going to come round, he's going to nick the front of this bus lane as he comes round. Yeah, I'm going to watch it back mate, hang on. This is going to be a problem here, there's a car of his ass stuck right out in the room. 